everyone i hope you people will be fine and enjoying a very sound health my name is engineer mohammad wali vikram today i am going to present uh, another very interesting uh, uh, video tutorial related to uh, scap simulation tool and uh, during my uh, previous tutorials i have provided a very brief uh, information related to uh, different structures that can be simulated on this uh, simulation tool uh, in my today's tutorial i would like to add some important things that 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 are mentioned by different uh, researchers in my comment section uh they have a lot of important question i would like to address their answers in my today's tutorial uh and uh, one of the most important thing about today's tutorial uh, i am going to present a perovskite structure uh, without a whole transport layer and i would like to uh, mention the main advantages uh if a person if a researcher if a student would like to simulate a structure without whole transport layer so i hope it will be very uh, important tutorial for all those people who are working in perovskite solar cell and they are trying to simulate their electrical properties and they are trying to check their performance parameters and they are analyzing their defect densities etc so first of all i would like to share my screen so that i can display my structure and i can uh, inform all uh, the parameters that can be used for the mansion structure so i am going to share my screen okay over here uh, you can see uh, this is the main interface first interfacing layer of this cap simulation tool and uh, as per previous uh, video tutorials we need to do some basic step we need to make this illumination from dark to light and uh, we need to change uh, the uh, voc value because i am going to simulate another perovskite structure that is basically tin based perovskite so i know that the Uh, VOC value, average VOC value of tin-based perovskite solar cell uh, that has been achieved in lab uh, session is about point uh, eight and point eight one like that. So we know that uh, when we are going to perform simulation, simulation results are little bit higher uh, uh, as compared to lab work, uh, lab simulation, uh, lab results. So that. Uh, 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 so that i am going to uh, write down the value over here 1.5 it you can set 1.3 1.2 as well because the voc value of tin based perovskite solar cell is not beyond that uh, uh, 1.5 uh, the uh, in lab uh, lab experimental results so in simulation uh, we know that we can ignore lot of parameters Uh, so therefore i am going to set over here the value 1.5 and i am going to mark this button stop after voc because i need that when my uh, structure uh, has achieved the voc value the simulation has been stopped uh, immediately so that i can get results uh, very sharply and most important thing is over here temperature by default the scap simulation tool all the simulation is being carried out on 300 Kelvin temperature, but a person can change its value from 350, 400, and 500, and as well. And we know that most of perovskite structure, the temperature remains higher. So by increasing the temperature, definitely the performance parameter changes. And you can analyze this by changing the different temperature range, and you can get different performance parameter like VOC, short circuit current value, fill factor, and other as well. so i am going to uh, load another structure just i have mentioned that that structure is basically whole transport layer a free structure and i would like to uh, address the advantage of uh, that kind of structure and i am also going to express uh, what are the advantages 
of inverter or non inverter architecture uh, if we try to simulate in uh, simulation to scap as well as a lab experimental work so first of all i would like to load my structure by clicking set problem over here now i need to do what i need to do uh, click load button over here okay so now uh, so you uh, you can see now that um, my structure has been loaded uh, first of all i would like to explain what kind of structure it is so you can see we have carbon layer over here we have a perovskite layer over here we have a fto uh, glass layer over here you can add front and back metal contact as well but i'm not going to add front and back metal contacts uh, during uh, my this simulation work because uh, uh, we can get uh, the results are more similar without a front and back metal contact as well so in my structure you can see there is no hole transport uh, layer available in my structure now i would like to add the advantage if a person a researcher a student wants to uh, design a structure uh, that does not have any hole transport layer what can be advantage we know that one very important thing while we uh, used to manufacture a perovskite device is basically the cost uh, the most of the cost uh, issue has been increased if we try to add a hole transport layer and uh, the main advantage a structure having no hole transport layer we can minimize the cost of uh, manufacturing of uh, uh, perovskite solar device so you can see there is no uh, hole transport layer over here and second thing uh, most important that i need to express for those people who are researcher and working in perovskite uh, simulation uh, field that if you will try to uh, design uh, a hole transport layer structure uh, in scap and in lab work two main important things you will get first thing stability it has been seen that uh, without the use of a hole transport layer the stability of the device tend to increases second thing the cost of the perovskite device tend to decrease third thing jv hysteresis you jv hysteresis analysis uh is comparatively significantly lower if we will not include hole transport layer so tra stability so the cost and uh, lowest uh, jv hysteresis losses uh, were, these are the three main advantage if someone is trying to simulate a perovskite device with all the hole transport layer so over here this c60 carbon layer is basically electron transport layer over here this is fa 10 triiodide base perovskite structure fto is basically glass layer over here now i am going to do what i want to show some parametric properties that are very important for a person who is going to simulate uh, the perovskite structure so so i am going to click this first layer that is c60 etl layer over here over here at the top there is a name of the layer that is c60 and now there is a thickness and uh, it is very important thing you can set thickness in micrometer and nanometer uh, normally uh, carbon layer thickness must be a little bit lower as compared to the uh, thickness layer of the other layer of the layers of the perovskite device because as we increase the thickness uh, it has been seen that uh, Uh, the recombination factor uh, tend to increase and the um, uh, overall performance has been decreased due to in increment of uh, layer thickness layer of etl and uh, perovskite and other layer parameters so next is the one band gap uh, now one person ask me how i am going to set uh, these values so you need to uh, study the literature and you need to Study the what is the band gap value 
for the carbon layer and the electron affinity and the dielectric permittivity values. And the most important thing, CB and VB, effective density values, that values can be achieved by continuity equation and a Poisson equation because this simulation tool basically deals uh, equation of continuity and Poisson equation in order to get uh, different parameters that can be used uh, in any structure uh, that can be simulated. And uh, over here is the acceptor density and uh, it clearly defines how much doping you are adding in your particular layer and, uh, and uh, electron and hole mobility. In my previous uh, tutorial, I have explained that normally uh, the electron mobility is twice than the hole mobility. So you can set uh, both parameters according to your device structure and it can be same as well. But uh, when we try to check the electron and thermal velocity value, it remains the same. By default, in SCAP simulation tool, uh, whenever you want to simulate any periviscite structure, you will see that uh, the electron uh, thermal velocity and hole velocity will remain same. Now, the, another important thing, a person need to add defect. Definitely, a structure can never exist without the defects. So you can change the defect density. Normally, if we say that there is no defect in our structure, in our layer, normally this value remains from uh, 10 raised power 13. But uh, I am assuming that my structure has uh, uh, some defect. It can be layer defect, it can be interfacing defect, and it can be other like defects. So I'm going to set the value 1 raised power 15. Defect type must be neutral. Make sure the ETL layer and FTO layer defect type should be neutral. And uh, cross-section electron, uh, you can set uh, value 1 raised power minus 18, 16, 17, but I'm going to simulate a structure that has uh, the value 1 raised power minus 15. So by clicking over here, actually we are going, going to add a uh, defect state in our layer. So now I'm going to express the second most important layer and the parameters. Mostly people are very uh, confused about uh, this layer's parameter and structure. Over here is the name of the layer. And the most important thing, the thickness. Thickness of the periviscite layers plays a very vital role in improving or, de or, uh, or decreasing the performance of the device. Normally, the thickness layer of the periviscite uh, uh, is in range of 400 to 500, 600 to 700 nanometer, depending upon the type of the periviscite. FA-based uh, periviscite uh, devices, the thickness layer is about uh, 400 and 400 to 50. And uh, sometimes it happens when we tend to increase the thickness uh, layer of the periviscite, uh, uh, of the periviscite, the performance parameter increases, but further more increasing the thickness of the layer, the performance parameter tend to decrease instead of increasing because as we, long we increase the thickness, the recombination factor, the uh, defect density like uh, surface crack, like pinholes can exist. So it is very important to get the optimal value for any particular uh, periviscite thickness layer value. So over here, I'm using 400, that is nominal value. You can set 450 as well uh, uh, also. And next is the band gap value. This is the most important thing for any researcher and student, what a band gap value should be. We know that tin based periviscite, according to uh, my th literature study, the uh, band gap value is limited from 1.2 to 1.4. While when we talk about the lead base, it is about uh, uh, 1.55 as well, little bit higher as compared to uh, uh, FA uh, uh, tin triodide base and lead base. So I'm going to set over here 1.3. And from literature, you can also check the electron affinity value for this paraviscite and the dielectric permittivity. And CB and VB values can be obtained from Poisson and equation of continuity because I have just expressed in my uh, in my, my previous layer that um, both these values and uh, 
electron and the whole mobility values can be achieved from two equations poisson and equation of continuity that can be uh, determined from uh, any perovskite structure by changing their value and over here is the uniform acceptor density and uh, I just i have explained that this is the value of uh, adding doping concentration definitely adding more doping concentration makes more uh, structure uh, efficient but we need to compute the nominal value normally this value remains from 18 16 and uh, 17 just similar to previous one we need to add defect density over here nt is total defect density that is 1 raised power 16 and type of the defect type is basically kept neutral so by clicking over here we have already set the values of second layer and now we are going towards the fto layer uh, the fto layer thickness it can be 505 normally it should be a uh, little bit close to the thickness layer of the perovskite it should not be uh, increased more than 500 600 700 because as the thickness layer of the fto glass increases uh it has seen that the uh, recombination factor and the defect trap density tend to increase is making the structure more uh, degraded for performance parameter and then over here band gap value and just similar you can get the values of cv vb and electron hole mobility values from mentioned equations now i am going to do what i am going to add this layer as well and the now the second last important thing we need to do what we need to add interfaces there is first interfaces between fto and uh, perovskite because the beam of light will be incident on fto and the interface will be between fto and the uh, perovskite layer and the second interface is between what perovskite and the etl c60 carbon and one most important thing that i need to mention over here why i am using c60 carbon layer over here it has been seen that among other etl layers of different parameters the highest efficiency related to performance parameter like voc short circuit current value and uh, fill factor has been achieved with the use of this uh, etl parameter c60 so therefore i am going to use over here but a person can set uh, other parameter as well but for their information uh, i'm just saying that this uh, etl layer has provided very better and significant results and another important thing that we need to add uh, uh, defect type over here that must be neutral and total defect density you can set 18 16 17 and 18 i have assigned 18 value because i know that there must be definitely defect so i am going to keep little bit higher value as compared to the uh, nominal value and then i need to click over here and uh, by clicking over here once again i am getting the same uh defect type should be neutral and the defect uh, total uh, density i am keeping this value uh one raised per 18 and a person can set 17 16 according to their structure as well and last important thing this structure is basically inverted architecture inverted art architectures means what because uh, there are two kind of uh, architecture that can be simulated in scap simulation inverted and non inverted and it has been concluded and seen from lab work and simulation work inverted architectures are more stable than uh, non inverted architectures are more stable as compared to inverted ones and uh, so as we can see that the beam of light will be incident from bottom instead of the top of the uh, layer of this uh, 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 perovskite device and the illumination and the important thing it should keep uh, from right to left uh, if we will try to keep the button left to right it will provide us a little bit lower performance parameter so now i am going to do what i am going to simulate the this structure and i am going to check what values can be obtained from here and then i will uh, add my conclusion what are the difference between simulation and what are the difference between lab experimental results 
So over here, I'm going to click OK. So we need to mark the button uh, action, IV curve, quantum efficiency. And uh, now I am going to do what I am going to click, calculate single shot. Over here, my the simulation of uh, mentioned structured device uh, is going to be simulated and we need to wait for the results. Uh, as the results will be computed, I will uh, put my remarks and I will try to compare the results with the lab work as well. So I'm going to click on IV curve. Okay, so we can see uh, from the results that uh, has been achieved by this uh, HTL free structure, inverted architecture, the VOC value is limited to 0 0.95, short circuit current value is 24.97, fill factor 75.16 and efficiency is better. 17.80. Uh, now I'm going to express uh, the, the, a brief comparison between these results and the, some experimental results that have been studied by me in my literature study. Uh, the VOC value uh, almost uh, achieved from uh, lab point of view for uh, mentioned paraviscite is limited about uh, 0 0.60 and 0.80. 58 volt so little bit difference between voc value simulated and uh, experimental while the short circuit current value for the lab session with the same paraviscite has been achieved about 19 point something so there is a little bit difference fill factor uh, the value of the fill factor that has been achieved with this paraviscite is about uh, 68 point something and the efficiency uh, the most important thing that is basically efficiency. The efficiency of this paraviscite is limited in lab session is about 10.75 highest. So uh, we know that there is always a difference between uh, lab work and simulated work, but we can uh, optimize our results a little bit close to lab work by optimizing the better values like thickness, like tra surface trap density, temperature, and the uh, doping concentration, uh, et cetera. Now, I'm going to express uh, another uh, main information before the end of my today's tutorial, what kind of parameters a researcher student can get by using this simulation tool. Just you can see, we can get electrical property like VOC, short circuit current value, fill factor, and eta efficiency. Fifth important parameter a person can obtain from this simulation work is basically quantum efficiency. You can get the value of the quantum efficiency and from quantum efficiency graph, we can see that the highest quantum efficiency was achieved for the wavelength of about, uh, uh, you can see 360 nanometer. And after 360 nanometer and higher value of the band gap value of band gap wavelength value, the quantum efficiency was turned to decreasing. So making uh, the structure more defective as long as we tend to increase the, the thickness of the layer of the absorber beyond uh, 400, 450, 500, etc. And uh, another important thing that a person can get that are energy bands. You can check energy band graph as well from this simulation. Uh, that can be like whole mobility, electron mobility, and total charge uh, values with respect to distance. And uh, similarly, there will be uh, EV and distance graph and graph as well with respect to distance. So, uh, so a person can check the fit density values can check uh, the electron and hole mobility values and stability and the uh, electrical properties, quantum efficiency as well, like these parameters from this simulation tool. I hope uh, this simulation tutorial uh, will be very really helpful for those who are working in paraviscite domain and they are trying to simulate a structure uh, that is basically whole transport free structure and uh, they can uh, get better results 
by optimizing different parametric values and they can use different ETL uh, parameters and materials and get different results. If you have any question, if you have any query regarding to my today's tutorial, you can add uh, in my comment section. I will try to reply back. I hope uh, it will be very beneficial for all of you. Stay blessed, take care.